But let's get into it and talk to one of the players. In fact, he is an American footballer who came to Australia. He is the AFLPA delegate at the Collingwood Football Club and his name is Mason Cox, who has got a unique perspective on all this, uh, knowing the uh, different labour laws that they have in sport in the United States. And Cox, he joins us tonight live from his land room. Uh, Mason, welcome to the show. Uh, can, first of all, can I just get your reaction to what's happened in the last week and how now it's, be, it's sort of squaring up between the AFL versus the players? Yeah, it's, um, it's quite unique, to be honest. Um, we're in pretty much unprecedented times at the moment and um, really I don't think anyone could have probably seen or um, foreshadowed, I guess, what's going to happen um, with the, the moment or with everything going on at the moment. So um, it is very unique circumstances. Um, everything's happened so quickly. I think it's caught everyone off guard and uh, we're just trying to play catch up because it seems like every day, every hour, um, things are changing. So it's um, definitely a, a unique situation. Are you disappointed that you've been portrayed. Uh, to me, a lot of your fellow cohorts are talking about themselves sort of saying they're victims and they've been performing selfless acts and we talked about the bushfire game in the first segment. Do you think you're being well advised by the Players Association? Oh, 100%. Um, Paul Marsh, the CEO of the Players Association, has done a, an amazing job. I mean, you look at Gil, you look at himself, everyone's under pressure here. It's... Um, it's not just one person feeling it. Everyone's um, having to go through this. So he's definitely led the players in, in an amazing way. And um, obviously the media is going to have their, their own comments and everything else. But at the end of the day, well, like we, I said, it's We make those comments, and... Mason, when we talk to the clubs and we talk to coaches and club CEOs and people at the AFL who are very frustrated by the discord going on at the moment. Well, I mean, from a player's perspective, we... I mean, is, is, this is really kind of somewhat out of our, our control. Like, we're all trying to play catch-up, like I said. And um, unfortunately, it has been a very tough time for clubs and the AFL over the past week. And um, it's probably going to get a lot worse probably before, before it gets better. So uh, we just have to kind of go through this and um, go through a bit of the muck at the time to, to be able to get to the light at the end of the tunnel. So, um, yeah, it is it is trying times for us. Um, but I think uh, the biggest thing is we all just need to somehow stand, stand together. So, Kara, I, I, I see that the media actually is playing its role, but it's also looking for a fight and trying to get it going. Now, people are responding. You don't have to look very far in. Yeah, I know, but don't they're have responding. To look very far. My point is that the players, I think they're justified in waiting to see what the bigger picture is because the clubs are still waiting to sign off on things. As opposed to all the coaches and everyone else at the clubs who've lost their jobs already. Yeah, but having said so that. We probably it, should bring Mason back into the conversation. Mason? I want to put it to Mason. Okay. It is because this is. What, Ultimately, this is going to be the saving that the uh, AFL needs to survive. So the players are going to have to take a big hit. What, what is the, the, the talk between the players at the moment as far as what that, that situation is? And I would, I'd like to ask you a unique situation because you come from American sport where billionaire owners own these places and suddenly you've had a realisation that you work in a community sport. Yeah, it is. I mean, every club's owned by the, the fans at the end of the day and um, whenever we can have fans show up and and we can't play, it's obviously going to take a hit. So um, it's it's everyone that's taking a hit from clubs to players to the AFL. Everyone is trying to figure out, I guess, the best case scenario to go forward. And um, it's all happening so quick that um, it is a tough thing to be able to to figure out just on a you know, snap of the fingers. It's just not, it's not realistic to expect things to be able to happen that quickly. Um, so I think from a player's perspective, we just got to help. Or we got to ask to, to, for everyone just to take a breath um, you know, calm down and let us just be able to go through the process. It's, it's something that I wish we could have it all in place, but this is such an unprecedented thing that happens so quickly that we're just trying to play catch up. Mason, you were playing last Friday night, albeit with no crowd. Tomorrow night, you're meant to be playing the Richmond Football Club in front of possibly 90,000 people. You are the Collingwood AFLPA delegate. What sort of phone calls are you receiving from players? Panic-stricken, probably about money, their careers. Can you talk us through some of those real-life moments? Oh, you can imagine. People have kids, you know, people have mortgages, people have everything on the financial side of things. And um, like I said, it's just, it's happening so quickly that no one really knows all the answers. And um, as a delegate, it's kind of tough because you have to try to try to keep everyone informed. But whenever um, everything's are moving so quickly, you can't really keep up with it. Um, unfortunately, we can't really get all the answers to our players. So um, we're just still kind of in limbo waiting uh, to see from the AFLPA um, and the AFL to see if they can come to, to, a, to a conclusion and kind of give us some more information on what we're going to do going forward. But for the next two months, we're all just going to focus on training and, and getting our staying in shape and um, hopefully things will turn around. Did you think about going home, Mason? 
Yeah, I thought about it. Um, obviously, I know there's, there's the international side of things is pretty tough. Uh, my whole family's back home in Dallas um, all together by myself, um, and they're all just kind of hanging out, so they're all in self-isolation too. And, and obviously, things in the States have probably escalated a little bit faster in Australia. Um, so it is a bit worrisome to have family across the way that you can't really do anything about, but uh, I'll keep in contact with them every single day. So um, if it would be phone calls or, or Skype sessions like this, um, I'll just try to keep up with them, just see how they're going. But uh, I think some of the Irish guys, it's, it was they had to go back so quickly and to pack up your whole life and move back at you know, 18, 19 years old is, is a tough thing to do. So uh, my, my thoughts go out with them um, and their families that are overseas at the moment and hopefully they're enjoying a bit of family time. Mason, uh, how are you training? What, what are the boys going to do? And are you prepared, if you need to, to play a grand final? Of course, if you're in it, you'll pl play at any time. But you may have to play finals right up to December this year. Have you got that through the guys? Are they talking about that? Yeah, I mean, everyone's got their uh, their programs we'll start doing. So I think we'll all get an exercise bike in, into the uh, place and start using that. And then uh, we'll try to use the uh, at-home kind of kit, I guess, that we all have in isolation. So it's um, it's going to be unique. I think the uh, the way everyone's going to have to, I guess, uh, redo their kind of um, normal routines as far as working out. But at the end of the day, I think um, everyone's still striving to win a premiership uh, at this moment. So we're going to do everything in our power to try to get to that. Final question, mate. Have you heard from Paul Marsh as far as how things are going? Is tomorrow a day that maybe we can get a re resolution of this? Or what's the thoughts? Uh, we haven't heard anything from him yet. No. Yeah. So it's, um, I know they're still talking everything else. So it's uh, a bit of wait and see at the moment. And um, it is a very um, complex kind of thing. I mean, a contract's not the same as the next contract on the table. So there's a lot of th different things at play. I think, like I said before, it's just going to take a bit of time, unfortunately. Good on you, Mason. Uh, good luck, mate. And uh, we'll catch up with you and your friends as often as we can via Skype, as uh, everyone's doing in the football world these days. Mate, thank you very much for joining us in very interesting times. Mason Cox, the AFLPA delegate of the Collingwood Football Club. <laughs>